Hey guys, Tyler Hicks here, brand ambassador with Old Town Canoe and Kayak. Today I'm on the central Oregon coast in one of the world's smallest harbors, Depot Bay, Oregon. And today I thought I'd take an opportunity to talk a little bit about offshore safety and reading swell forecasts for those that are unfamiliar with it. Because there's nothing more fun than taking your kayak out into the big blue, but it does come with its own dangers. And I thought I'd go over some of those uh, things today to reduce those dangers and make your trip a safe and productive one. So we're going to squeeze through the little harbor here. So I have to follow certain protocols when I do that. And uh, then we'll get going. All the safety equipment I'm using today is all good stuff to have when you're going offshore in your kayak on a fishing adventure. Kayak outbound Depot Bay. Now the entrance to this bay is so narrow that only one boat can fit through here. So even with a kayak in here, it's hard for even a power boat to get through. Power through as quickly as possible. That's why I use the horn, just to let everybody know. But yeah, you can see this thing's only about 20, 30 foot wide. So one of the first and most important pieces of equipment you're gonna have when you come out on the ocean is obviously your PFD. And the vast majority of kayak drownings are associated with people not wearing their PFD. So by doing that, you greatly increase your odds of survivorship if you're to end up in the water. And one of the main reasons the ocean is so much more dangerous for this is just because uh, time to rescue is usually a lot longer. So if you're unable to get back in your kayak, which I would consider an essential skill before venturing out onto the ocean, is being able to self-rescue, uh, having that PFD is going to give you that edge. Additionally, because where I'm at and the Pacific Northwest and cold water currents, um, we need to have immersion gear on year round just to protect us from the cold waters. Water temperatures here are in the low 50s, so hypothermia is a real threat. And it's a good idea to uh, have the proper safety gear to keep you uh, warm and dry if you're going to be fishing in cold water situations. Now, another thing I highly recommend is if you're using a fish finder with a chart plotter or a GPS, that you uh, leave a breadcrumb trail. It's going to let you find your launch point in the eventuality that uh, some heavy fog sets in, which is always a possibility on our oceans, especially in our, our northern offshore fishing locations. So be ready for that. Now, another tip I'll give you when going out on the ocean is always file a float plan. Whether you're fishing solo, or better yet, if you can fish with a buddy, um, always file a float plan with a loved one or someone you trust. And in that float plan, file details like where you're launching, when you're launching, description of your kayak, description of your launch vehicle, your anticipated fishing location. So you kind of have an idea of what reef or structure you're going to go work. Put that in there. Put those details in there so they know where you're going. And if you don't show up on time, they have an area they can start searching and working back towards the launch. Most importantly, put in there the time that you expect to be off the water. And commit to that time. Uh, don't, don't force a loved one to make a decision between uh, calling the Coast Guard or making them think about whether or not you're just pushing your, your day out on the water to make it a little bit longer. Um, it's your responsibility to commit to those times that you say you're going to get off the water and check in and uh, not, not put your loved one in that really awkward position. Of course, the, the best solution is if, if you get into trouble out on the water is to be able to uh, contact Coast Guard or request assistance on your own. Uh, modern smartphones, most of them are waterproof now, so make sure you have one with you. But also, uh, a VHF radio, a floating handheld VHF radio is a great option. And just remember that channel 16 is the correct channel to get a hold of Coast Guard and request some kind of assistance or assistance from other nearby boats. Almost everybody monitors channel 16. Now when I get out here, and we have you know, three foot swells today with the occasional four footer. Uh, I feel pretty tiny out on this vast ocean. And I look tiny, right? I'm very hard to see. Uh, even in a bright kayak, 
you need to try to do everything you can to make yourself a little more visible that includes safety flags wear bright colored clothing brighter colored kayaks that's why i really like bright colored kayaks if you're more of an open ocean fisherman um, you know tend towards those brighter colors the oranges and yellows stay away from those mute olives and browns and that will blend in or even light blue can be really hard on a sunny day but that's why i have this bright dry suit on i got this orange kayak got a safety flag i'm trying to make myself more apparent and that's not just to stop boaters from running into me and things like that but but also if i need help uh, it's gonna make them so much easier to spot me in a, this bright coloration Ooh, fish. king Jeez. There he goes back down. Wow. That was a run. Underneath the kayak. They always do. Come on. Got him. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Ocean King, baby. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a nice fish gorgeous it's one of the most important things when reading offshore forecasts is understanding swell and that includes swell height and time or period sometimes it's called so period is basically the amount of time it takes from one one wave to pass one point till the next wave passes that same point and of course the longer the period is the more that the waves are stretched out which means they they're flatter right harder for you to sense the waves because they've been stretched out and are flatter and then there is wave height and i have a general rule that is that you want your uh period the time between waves to be at least twice that of your swell height to make it comfortable to be out here on the ocean but that being said, there's still limits to that, right? Like I'm not gonna come out in five foot at 10 seconds because five foot's just too big for me. So, you know, four is sort of my cap. And even then four, four foot at eight seconds is getting to be uncomfortable. I really prefer three foot at eight seconds or longer, right? And the longer it goes, the, the flatter it gets. But you have to realize too that you can have mixed swell. Like today we have uh, three foot at nine seconds out of the northwest and we have one and a half foot uh, at 16 seconds out of the southwest so that's a very short wave uh, long period very hard to detect but it does add some energy to the system and so you'll get the occasional wave out here building to four foot right and so that's that's when they talk about significant wave height that is a certain percentage of those waves are going to combine to create a much larger wave you can also get larger waves um, if you have wind because wind can have an additive effect or it can have very little effect so for example wind that is going with the swell will tend not to um, add actually that much height it's counterintuitive right swell is generated by big storms far away but if you have wind blowing against the swell it'll build right because you have these two forces counteracting each other you'll get a less pleasant conditions so we call that fetching and it's a pretty important thing to understand uh, and in some systems you might even have tidal influence especially in bays and things like that where uh, they're draining out through inlets or uh, bays are draining um, and they, if they interact with swell at all or with wind they can also uh, build on each other these are anytime you have opposing forces uh, with the ocean and tides and swell it's not a good thing the ocean's going to get angrier and it's going to be less pleasant now if you're surf launching a kayak there's a little bit of counterintuitive thinking here because a longer wave can actually result in a bigger break on the beach a, a taller wave break on the beach and so all that 
stored energy in that wave because of its mass when it hits the beach it can push and actually build up more than uh, a shorter wave would so if you're surf launching that's something to be wary of is to uh, consider that what the conditions are out on the ocean maybe longer flatter waves might make for a little bit more difficult surf launch um, in some instances that will depend though greatly on the structure of your beach uh, the slope and and whether or not there's any sort of reefs or anything out there that, oops. That was a fish. Um, if there's any reefs out there that uh, will help dissipate some of the energy another thing I highly recommend is carrying a repair kit for your old town kayak while you're out offshore because something happens out here it's gonna be a lot bigger issue so I have here in this kit I've got spare shear pins I've got a spare prop in the back on the, locked into my cooler I've got spare nuts bolts a, attachments for my rod holders cameras everything I carry all that right here with me all the time because if something happens out here it's not like it's an easy fix but if I can solve my issue out here I can extend my day out here or I can at least get fixed up to the point I can get back to the ramp safely and when you buy your Old Town Sportsman's, you get this cool little tackle kit. It's the perfect thing to set aside just for your repair kit. And it slides nicely into your chair or into your tackle box, and you can keep it there. So if you need to do repairs, you'll have it. This is that mixed swell you're talking about. I was talking about what's starting to get a little slish sloshy. Every once in a while, I'll fill it, like come in from this side. Kayaker inbound depot bay. Kayaker inbound depot bay. Now another thing I recommend doing is once you get off the water is either at home or stop at a car wash and rinse everything down with fresh water. Especially if you have a PDL drive, um, you want to rinse down everywhere around the rudder to prevent corrosion. Because if you have corrosion, you're gonna have equipment failures later down the line and that's gonna leave you out on the water stranded. So take the time to rinse off all that salt water after you get off of the water. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. For more helpful tips, check out Old Town's uh, YouTube channel and blog online. See you guys.